Hello, welcome to Talk Math. Today we're going to be doing the 2021 AMC 12B problems number one through nine. Now, problem one asks how many integers solve the absolute value of x is less than three pi. You know three pi is slightly more than nine, so the integers one through nine will work, but then you also have the negatives, so you have negative one through nine and zero. So you have nine plus nine plus one equals 19, so the answer is D, and we're on to problem two. Question two said that there are 57 students with blue shirts, 75 students with yellow shirts. Then these students are, these 132 students are paired up into groups of two, so that 23 of the pairs have both blue shirts. Um, now the question asks, how many pairs do the students both have yellow shirts? Well, we have 23 pairs, both have blue shirts, and that means 46 kids have blue shirts in those pairs. So taking the 46 away from 57, we have 11 blue shirts left over. Those 11 blue shirts mean that 11 pairs have one blue shirt and one yellow shirt. So taking my 11 from 75, we get there's 64 uh, kids who have yellow shirts that aren't in the other pairs. So dividing that by two, we get that there are 32 uh, pairs of kids with yellow shirts. So that is the answer is B. Problem three gives us this equation. Now to start, I'm just gonna start at the bottom and work my way up and then see what we get from there. So when we have two plus uh, times, when we combine these fractions, two is really the same thing as six plus two X over three plus X. So adding these two together, we really get six plus two X plus two is gonna be two X plus eight. So we really have a two X plus eight right here. Now we're taking the reciprocal of this. So I'm gonna instead take this three plus X and move it right here. So you have three plus X. Now when we take this two X plus eight, and we have 2x plus 8 over 2x plus 8 plus the 3 plus x. So 2x plus 8 plus 3 plus x is going to give you 3x plus 11. So that means on the numerator right here, we have 3x plus 11. And then because we're flipping again, we can take this 2x plus 8, move it to the top. And now combining the last little bit, we have 3x plus 11 times 2 is going to give you 6x plus 22 plus 2 plus x is going to give you 8x plus 30 over 3x plus 11 has to equal 144 over 53. Now we can finally cross multiply and solve from there. So you have 53 times eight is gonna give you 424 plus 53 times 30 is gonna give you 159, zero, sorry, I forgot the eight, eight X right there. So then we have that is gonna equal to 144 times three is gonna be 432. And then 11 times 44, I'm just gonna I'll figure that out in a second. So plus 11 times 44. Now, sorry, 144. Now, subtracting this from both sides, we have 1590 minus 11 times 144 equals uh, 8x. So now we need to figure out what 11 times 144 is. So that's going to be 1440 plus 144, which equals uh, 4851. So 1584. So 1590 minus 1584 is 6 equals 8x. X equals 3 fourths. And that's answer choice A, and we're on to problem number four. Now, problem number four asks us, tells us that the more there's a, at school, the morning class has a mean score of 84, and the afternoon class has a mean score on a test of 70. If we know the ratio of the amount of morning school students to afternoon school students is three fourths, what is the mean of all the scores? So let's just say that there are three X morning school students. So then we have three X times 84, and that there are four X afternoon school students, so plus 70 times four X, all over the total amount of students is going to be 3x plus 4x, which is 7x. You can see the x's will cancel, which should they should because it doesn't matter how many students there are. And now we just have this number. So we need to calculate 3 times 84 plus 70 times 4, so that's going to be 280. Plus 3 times 84 is going to be 242, 52. So adding these together, we get 2, 3, 1, 5, 32, divided by 7 now. So 7 is going to be there 7 times, so that's going to be 42. Sorry, 49. Uh, four, one, that's going to give us a four, two, so six. We have 76, and that is the total mean of all uh, tests. And that is answer choice C. Question five tells us that if A comma B is rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise, about 0.1 comma five, and then it's reflected over Y equals negative X, and then lands on the point negative six comma three. And so we basically want to find A and B, and then we can then use that to find what the question is looking for, which is B minus A. So I'm just going to graph this really quickly. So... I'm going to go out 6 in each direction. So we start at negative 6, 3, which is right here. Then we reflect about the line y equals negative x, which is that line. So reflecting that, we're going to be at negative 3, 6. So now we're at negative 3, 6. And we're rotating that point about the point 1, 5. 1, 5 is right here. And if you look, we could draw that down. It goes over 4 units, and it goes up 1 unit. So we rotate that clockwise, because we want to do the opposite of this. So we rotate that clockwise now, 
we're going to go up four units and over one unit. And the point's going to be right there. So we have the point 1, 5 plus four units in the y direction is going to give us a 9. And then plus one unit in the x direction is going to give us a 2. So you have 2, 9, which means that b minus a is going to be 7, which is the answer choice d, and we're done with the problem. Now moving on to question six, we're given that an inverted cone has radius 12 centimeters and a height of 18 centimeters, and it's filled with water. Then this volume is poured into a cylinder of radius 24 centimeters, and it asks us to find the height of the cylinder. So then now what we need to do is set the volumes equal and find a new height. So the volume of the first uh, cone is gonna be the uh, height over three, so 18 over three, times pi times the radius squared, so 12 squared, and that must equal to the, the volume of the cylinder, which is gonna be pi times the radius squared times the height. So now we can cancel out the pi's, divide both sides by 24 squared, we get six times 12 over 24 is one half, so times one half squared equals the height. So that means the height is gonna be equal to 1.5, which is answer choice A, and we're done with the problem. Question seven gives us that n is equal to 34 times 34 times 63 times 270. And asks us, what is the ratio of the sum of the odd divisors of n to the sum of the even divisors of n? Now, because the problem asks us to do with the sum of the divisors, the first thing I want to do is find the prime factorization of this. So we know 34 is 2 times 17, so we have 2 times 17. We have two of those, so I'm going to write squared. Now we have 63 is going to be 3 squared times 7, times 3 squared times 7. Now we have 270 is going to be 3 cubed times 10, so times 3 cubed times 2 times 5. Now grouping these off, we have two 2s, and then the third 2, so we have 2 cubed times 3 squared, 3 cubed is 3 to the 5th times we have a five and then we have seven we have three sevens seven cubed so that's the prime factorization of that number so now we want to find the sum of the odd divisors and the sum of the even divisors well the other trick for this and if you don't know what it is it's you take each term so we have two cubed so we're going to take a one plus two plus four plus eight so all the way up to two cubed we're going to multiply that by this one one plus three plus nine plus 27 all the way up until three to the fifth and we're gonna multiply that by one plus five, and then multiply that, I'm gonna write out on the next line, by one plus seven plus seven squared plus seven cubed. And that's gonna give us the sum of all of the divisors of this number. So we don't necessarily want all the divisors though. We want first to know the sum of the odd divisors. Well, for the sum of the odd divisors, we should take away all the twos, which means that we should get rid of this right here. So this number is the sum of all of the odd divisors of n. Now let's find the sum of all the even divisors we can just take all the, some of the, all the odd ones and subtract the sum of all the, sorry, the sum of all the divisors and subtract the sum of all the odd ones. So let's just say that the sum of all, I'm going to write as s. So sum of all the divisors is going to be s. That means the sum of the odd divisors is going to be s divided by 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8. And that means the, over the sum of the even divisors is going to be s minus s over 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8. And now just recapping where this comes from, s is the sum of all divisors. Dividing that by this term gives us the sum of all the odd divisors. So we notice that all the s's cancel, and 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 is 15. So this gives us 1 15 over 1 minus 1 15. Then this is going to give us, multiply 15, 1 over 14. So that's the answer choice C, and we're done with the problem. Now moving on to question 8, we have three equally spaced parallel lines intersect a circle, which create three cores of lengths 38, 38, and 34. And we want to know what is the distance between these parallel lines. So the first thing to do is to draw a diagram. So we have a circle, and we have three lines, and we have two of them are the same, so those must be equally spaced. If this is the center, it must be equally spaced on either side of the center. So we have this one, and we have this one, and we have a third one of length 34, which is going out the same distance, is right here. So we know this length, let's call it A, and we know this length is going to be 2A, because this distance must be the same as this distance. So we also know from here to here is A, but from here to here, but I'm not going to draw that in. So now we also know that this whole chord has like 34, which means that half the chord has like 17. This half has like 19. Now all we need to do is solve for a. We can do that by drawing in this radius and drawing in this radius instead of an equation. If we know that this, we have a right triangle right here. So that r squared s equal 19 squared plus a squared. Now using this right triangle, we also have that r squared equals 17 squared plus 3a squared, which is 9a squared. Now we can set these equal to solve for a, so we have that 9a squared plus 289 equals 19 squared is 361 plus a squared. So 8a squared is going to be equal to 72, 
which means that a squared is equal to 9, so a equals 3. And the question asks to find the distance between two parallel lines, which is going to be 2 times a, which is going to be 6, which is the answer choice b, and we're off the problem. Now, question 9 asks us to simplify this log expression. Now, when I see this, I want to separate this log of 80 out into powers of 2 and a 5, because that's a 16 times 5. So you can write the log base 2 of 80 as 5, sorry, 4 plus log base 2 of 5. So you have 4 plus log base 2 of 5. And now we're dividing this by log base 42. So that's the same thing as multiplying by log base 2 of 40. And log base 2 of 40 is the same thing as 8 log base 2 of 8 times 5, or 3 plus log base 2 of 5. Now we have minus on this side, we have log base 2 of 160. It's going to be 32 times 5, so 5 plus log base 2 of 5. And we have the denominator, again, this is the same thing as saying log base 2 of 20 being multiplied. And log base 2 of 20 is going to be 2 plus log base 2 of 5. Now what we need to do is expand out all these, so we get 12 plus 3 log base 2 of 5, and 4 log base 2 of 5 is going to give us 7 log base 2 of 5. And now we have a log base 2 of 5 squared. Minus, we have a 5 times 2 is 10. And then we're going to have a minus 2 times log base 2 of 5 plus 5 log base 2 of 5 is going to be minus 7 log base 2 of 5. And then we're going to have a log base 2 of 5 squared. So minus log base 2 of 5 quantity squared. Now we notice that this cancels with this. This cancels with this, leaving which is 12 minus 10, which is 2, which is the answer choice D, and we're done with the problem. Thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I will be uploading the rest of the problems later on when I get a chance. So please like and subscribe if you want to see more like it, and feel free to leave any comments or suggestions down below.